doing um, Hot Hatha class. So this is inspired by the 26 and 2 yoga um, sequence, which you'll usually find typically in hot yoga classes. And so the 26 and 2 refers to 26 yoga asanas that you do, and the two pranayama breathing exercises that you do that make up generally most hot yoga classes today. I already filmed a standing series to the hot hatha, and I think I will link it in the description below. And so today I'm going to be doing the floor series to complement that out. In one day, I will do the full series together so that we can practice it all in one go. Typically speaking, the full sequence is about 90 minutes long, but um, I have seen 60 minute as well as 45 minute versions of it, so we'll see what happens when we actually do it. But let's find ourselves lying down on our belly, extend the legs out, place the left palm in the middle of the mat, place the right palm over it, and let the forehead rest on top of the hands. Great, so in the hot hatha sequence, you really just get right into it. But I like to do a little bit of grounding to start each class. I think it's especially important, especially in these uh, yoga videos where we need to create a little container, a little space for ourselves to really invest in our time on the mat. I love a good online yoga class, but it can also be hard to stay on the mat sometimes. So take these next few minutes to really begin to settle in and turn your awareness from the outside world right here. Turn it right into the space to whatever device is playing this video turning the awareness right to yourself on your mat, on your floor, wherever you are. It's not easy to come on the mat every day. And as a beginner or even as an intermediate student, it's okay to take breaks. Especially as householder yoga practitioners, it is okay, right? Desika Char says, in the heart of yoga, we must teach people to where they're at, not what we think they should be taught. And so when I say this, it's okay to take a break. I'm saying this because I recognize it is hard to build a habit it is hard because life things come up right so if you're on your mat good job great job and just simply try to be present connected to your breath and stay here right you're going to feel so good afterwards hopefully <laughs> So just begin to calm yourself by using your inhales and exhales. So the floor series of the hot hatha sequence, we are going to be working on our spine. And so we are going to be on our belly. If you have eaten a lot right before this class or even just drank a little bit more water or fluids than you normally do, you're going to feel it a little bit in the belly. It might be uncomfortable. Okay? So I just want you to be aware of that. And understand why if some poses might be a little bit more difficult, you have a reason. And there's no need to blame or shame or anything like that. All right, on your next inhale, let's lift the gaze up, place the palms underneath our shoulders, palms flat, lots of space between the, the fingers, splay them out wide, zip up the legs. So let's get the toes and the knees touching together. Maybe have a slight engagement in the glutes by slicing, contracting them. Chin is on the ground to start. 
hug the elbows in towards you and as you inhale let's take the gaze away from the mat and so what i like for you to do today is to press the tops of the feet down and you might feel a lifting in your kneecaps okay you might feel the shins lift away from the mat as you do so once you have that engagement lift the chest up a little bit higher and press down with the palms about 20 to 25 percent keep hugging in the elbows and this time final movement here look up look up towards the sky if it does not hurt your neck okay breathe here inhale Puff up the heart as you exhale, ground, root your pubic bone in towards the mat. Okay, so I want you to feel nice engagement with the legs, with pressing your feet down, lifting the kneecaps, and about 20% of weight in your hands to hold you up a little bit higher. And exhale, slowly release. You're gonna place the left ear on the mat and look over to the right side. You can place the arms down by your sides as well. Take five breaths here. And then we'll do it again on the second side. So in hot yoga, there's also mini shavasanas in between each asana in the floor series. So that's a little bit nice as well. All right, take your gaze away from the mat. Place the palms underneath your shoulders and again, Bring the toes and heels together. Chin is on the ground. And let's get everything aligned before we kind of move up. So bring the toes and heels to touch, knees to touch, slightly squeeze the glutes. And as we inhale, look up. All right, can look a few inches forward in front of you as you squeeze the glutes, lift the kneecaps, and press the tops of the feet down. Okay, and then your next inhale, maybe press down the palms a little bit more and maybe even look up finally. All right, it's okay to use a little bit of strength in your palms, but try to keep a bend in your elbows unlike you, unless you like to straighten your elbows. Right? Make this cobra yours. But if you keep a slight bend in your elbows, you are working your low back muscles just a little bit more. This is important to work all parts of our spine. So inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower over and look over to the left side. Arms down on the mat. Inhale, look forward in front of you. We're gonna come into locust pose. And so locust pose is a little bit different here as well. So how we get into this pose, and you might wanna watch me first if you haven't done this variation before. Press down with the toe so that you can begin to scooch the bum up towards the sky. Once you create that little space underneath the legs, you're gonna slide the left arm and then the right arm underneath the body. And you want your palms facing down and a lot of space between your fingers. Okay, relax the left leg, and as you inhale, let's float the right leg parallel to the floor and point the toes back. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, point back. And if you're finding this is a lot for you, then just focus on pointing the right toes, okay? It doesn't matter how high the right leg goes, I just want you to point the toes. Breathing here for three, two, and one and slowly release this time relax the right leg inhale float the left leg parallel to the mat point the left toes and breathe here in and out point the toes maybe see if you can lift the leg a little bit higher if you can and slowly lower back down all right, so this final locust pose, you're gonna place your lips on your mat. And so if you don't really wanna do that, you can pause this video and grab a towel and place it right underneath your mouth. But we're gonna place the lips sealed on the floor or on the towel, just so that we can keep our necks secure. So what we're gonna do is that, you might have just seen me do this already, but again, I'm lifting my toes so that I can place my arms closer together while keeping them wide apart. 
On our inhale, we're gonna take both of the legs up. So press the lips down. Then as we inhale, take both of the legs up. Mouth is on the floor. Point the toes, knees together to touch. One more breath, lift up, and exhale, slowly release. Take the arms out from underneath the body. And look over the right side. You can bring your toes to touch and your heels out. That feels good for you. And so you might feel a lot of blood rushing back to the arms. And that variation can also be a little bit tricky because it is a little bit, especially if you've never done it before. So play around with it, see how it feels. All right, on your next inhale, let's look forward. And if you need to take a break at any time, you can do so. Or it can, you know, break this pose off into stages. So for one, you could always just keep your arms here and just get comfortable with this sensation, right? And if this isn't really working out for you, you can also have your arms down by your sides. And I'm actually going to do this for the second set just so that you can sort of see. So if you have your arms down by your sides, relax the left leg and inhale, lift the right leg parallel to the mat. So that's your starting position, just keeping the right leg parallel, pointing the right toes, but if you'd like, you can continue to lift that right leg a little bit higher. Breathing, and slowly let go. On your next breath, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back underneath here. So on your next breath, relax the right leg, and as you inhale, lift the left leg and point the left toes back. Right, continue to breathe, right? This pose can be challenging, so do what you can here and always take a break. One more time, point the toes, extend the legs nice and long, and slowly with control, let the left leg down. And we'll do the final variation of locust pose today. So again, you can bring the palms a little bit closer to touch for a little bit more support here by again, pressing down with the toes and lifting the hips up and then bringing the palms together before again, extending the legs long. This is usually how I like to get my arms nice and together. Zip up the legs, the so toes and heels touch, knees touch, slightly contract the glutes. And as you inhale again, lift up and your mouth is on the mat. Press down with the palms and lift up a little bit higher. And slowly release. Kinda hard to do this when you're talking, so let's place the right cheek on the floor and look over to the left side. Again, toes can touch, heels out to the side. On your next inhale, let's look and gaze forward in front of us. Let's bend the knees and grab onto the outsides of our feet with our hands. Feet, you can still grab onto the ankles depending on what you prefer. We're gonna be doing it um, two times, so maybe try out one grip and then try out the other grip. I'm gonna keep my hands around my ankles for both just because I like to have it on my ankles for a little bit more support here. As we inhale, let's lift the chest and chin away from the mat. Let's not even press the feet back, but just see if we can hold it here. Press the feet back and up. Okay, so your thighs are gonna leave the mat. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna rock a little bit. And let's try to get the legs up overhead. And so you're gonna feel maybe a little bit of pressure on the belly, so just be aware of that. Take one more breath, kick back up, and slowly release. Let the arms fall down by the sides and look over to the right. Left cheek is on the floor. Again, toes can point down, the toes can point in, whatever you'd like. On your next inhale, look forward and again, bend your knees, grab onto the tops of the feet or grab onto the ankles, whatever grip, um, switch up the grip, you know, whatever you had last time, just switch it up if you'd like. 
Actually, you know what? I will grab the tops of the feet and just see how that feels for me today. Generally, I like to grab around the ankles because my ankles are a little bit weak and my toes kind of go inward. Take the chest and chin away from the mat and as we exhale, lift the feet back and up and keep kicking the feet back and up. You might find you rock a little bit and that's okay. Just focus more on kicking the feet back and up. Just letting the arms open up here, okay? And slowly release. Right cheek on the floor and look over to the left side for that mini Shavasana. And so if you'd like, So this is a really great sequence for our spine, targeting all over the spine, the low spine, the middle spine, and the upper spine. So hot yoga has been really great for my back body. I, and it's a practice that has, and it is a practice that I've had since I've been in high school. Something incredibly therapeutic about these poses together. All right, on your next breath, place the palms underneath the shoulders. You're gonna lift yourself back up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit in between our heels. So sit the hips in between the heels. And if your knees are a little bit sensitive today, you can always bring the knees out. Clock our hands back and place one forearm on the ground and then the other forearm on the ground. And if you've been in this pose before, then you can come down with me. So what I like to do is slide my elbows in so that I have space to lower my forehead on the floor. And then I'm gonna reach my arms back behind me, grab them to opposite elbows, press down with the forearms so that I can place the back of my head on the ground. So knees together to touch as you inhale, lift the chest up and as you exhale, Melt and surrender and towards the earth. We're gonna hold this pose for about a minute. So simply breathe here. Inhale, lift the chest up and as you exhale, let the belly fall. So this is a great one to do for your yin practice as well. It's a great one to be in. So let yourself become aware of your breath, focusing on less, you do more. So just focus on the quality of your breath right now. Let's take one more inhale here together. And exhale, side out through the mouth. Okay, you can release the elbows and place them so that they dig on either side of your hips. This will give you enough space to place the palms on the heels. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig ourselves up. So dig the left elbow and then the right elbow up. up. And then you can walk yourself back upright. All right. So let's come to sit kneeling at the back of our mat so that we have a little bit more space for our half tortoise pose. All right, circle the arms up overhead, cup just your thumbs, and place the palms together, fingers together to touch. As we inhale, lift out of the waist, and as you exhale, see how slow you can go while keeping the bum on the heels. Use your breath, go slowly. You have all the time in the world. Head and arms in the same line. And then once you're there, perhaps your nose touches first and then the pinkies. And keep the head and arms in the same line. So what we're going to do in this half tortoise pose, which is quite similar to a child's pose, we're going to inhale and lift and reach the pinkies, pinky fingers forward. And as we exhale, we're going to relax and soften here. 
Okay, so this is a little bit more of an active child's pose. Your elbows are off of the mat and your arms are really long and engaged. So as we inhale, reach forward. As you exhale, melt. Okay. So keep lifting the elbows, arms, and head in the same line here. Inhale, reach forward once more, and as you exhale, sit back into your heels one more time. And inhale, slowly lift up, coming the same way that you came before, and let the arms release down by your sides. Whew. All right. Coming now to the middle of your mat, we're going to stand on our knee, and press our toes down towards the earth, palms on the low back. As you inhale, puff up the heart and look up. Coming into Ustrasana Camel Pose. Inhale, puff up the heart. As you exhale, hold it here. You can also place one hand on the heel and the other hand on the other heel. And if you'd like, you can also place the tops of the feet down on the mat. Right? This is a nice back bend, nice heart opener. Inhale, lift up the heart. Exhale, press the hips forward. Two more times. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, press forward. And once more, inhale, lift up the chest. Exhale, keep the hips forward. And slowly, you can place one hand on the low back, then the other hand on the other back, and try to go slowly as you can. All right, so we're gonna come into rabbit pose. So rabbit pose isn't something that I've really seen in a lot of vinyasa classes, so this might also be new. I'm just gonna move this off to the side as I'm going to be kind of going a little, I'm just gonna move that off to the side. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grip onto our heels with our hands. As we inhale, lift up the heart, lengthen the spine, and as we exhale, tuck in the chin and round your shoulders as you fold forward. So try to get the forehead to touch as close to your knees as you can. It's okay if there's a gap. And if you have a ponytail, you might want to take it out because it might be a little bit uncomfortable because what we're going to do is we're going to lift the hips away from the heels and grab tightly up with the heels with our hands, okay? Now, if there is a space between your knees and your head, walk the knees closer towards the head and press the tops of the feet down as you continue to lift the hips away from the heels, right? So we want little pressure on the head, more pressure on the tops of the feet. So you might wanna play around and see how this feels. As we inhale, lift up the hips once more and slowly lower the hips. And as you came, as you came down, slowly come up, keeping that neck Keeping the chin tucked and look up. Whew. All right. So we're coming down to a few final poses here before we end for today's practice. Bend the left knee and extend the right leg out to the side. As we inhale, let's interlace the fingers above our heads, reach up and exhale, twist from the core over to the right side and exhale, fold forward. Now you might cup the foot with your hand, or you might want to place the forms on either side of that right leg. What I'd like for you to do is work on the forehead touching the right knee, then folding forward towards the middle. Inhale, flex the toes in towards your face as you exhale, fold forward. This might feel really good if you have tight hamstrings, if you did running. I've been cycling this last few days, so I really feel it. On your next inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. And inhale, reach up. Returning back to center. This time, bend the right knee, the right sole of the foot on the inside of the left thigh. Inhale, inhale, lift up and exhale, twist over to the left side. And exhale, fold forward over that left leg. Again, you can scoop that left sole, the foot in your hands, 
or you can release the grip and let the arms fall down by the sides. What I want for you to do is more focus on the core rather than on the shoulders. Sometimes I find we're so focused on that grip, we end up using a lot of our shoulder strength because that's just what naturally comes to us. But instead flex the left toes and bring the forehead to touch the left elbow. A few more breaths here. Inhale, slowly look up. And inhale, reach back up. And exhale, arms down by your sides. Right. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna lie back down and we'll do a quick little sit up. So as you lie back down, reach the arms up overhead, flex the toes in towards your face. And as you exhale, reach up and fold forward, grabbing onto the tops of the feet. You might wanna make a big toe lock and just walk your self back. So this is one way to really uh, sit onto your sitting bones. But if you find there's still a lot of flesh that's rooting you down, you can also lift one bum cheek up, then lift the other bum cheek up. And what I want you to feel at the end of the day is to feel your sit bones really glued towards the mat, right? So no, no cushion here, because we want a little bit more support and stability. Inhale, flex the toes in towards your face. As you inhale, lift the arms up. And as you exhale, fold forward. And again, you can always grab the big toe locks with your two piece fingers, grab onto the outsides of the feet with your hands, or you can simply lay the arms on either side of your legs. So, Again, like I said, for head to knee pose, Janu Shashasana, for Paschimottanasana, I also want you to think about using the core, using your breath, so that you're not rounding your shoulders and really putting more strain on your spine, right? So, flex the toes in towards the face, feel the hamstrings, feel that work all down the backs of the legs. As you inhale, elongate the spine, imagine the crown of the head's gonna touch the toes, and you exhale, just fold forward. And if you need to, you can bend the knees closer towards your face. You know, that cycling has really stiffened my, my calves. <laughs> if you have any runners who are watching this video or any cyclists, please let me know how these poses feel. But the more you're in these poses, the more you can breathe and simply soften and surrender. Right? Really little yawn energy, but really working with our yin energy. Soften and breathe it is your only job, it is your only focus point, it is your only concentration, all right? One more breath. And slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. <laughs> one more pose, which is half lord of the fishes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit cross-legged to start. Then let's take the right knee and place the right foot over to the left side. Your right hip is on the inside of the left foot. And what we're gonna do is grab onto the right knee with the left elbow, right hand behind you like a kickstand, and just look over the right shoulder. All right, inhale, lifting out of the waist, and exhale, look back. Doesn't have quite as much of a flow as vinyasa, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful practice with so many therapeutic benefits, especially for the spine. So inhale, lifting out of the waist and exhale, look over the right shoulder. And inhale, twist back. All right. Place the right knee down on the ground, left knee over to the left side. Wrap the right elbow around the left knee, left hand behind you like a kickstand. Inhale, lifting out of the waist, low belly in, and look over the left shoulder. Inhale, lifting up, and exhale, twist back. And slowly release, lift, release the grip. We'll close today's practice with a Kapala Bhakti breath. You can sit kneeling or sit in whatever pose is most comfortable for you. But if you are sitting kneeling, you can place the palms on your knees, bring the shoulders back, and really open up the heart. Let's take an inhale through the mouth. 
and exhale out side out. And what we're gonna do with this practice is we're really just gonna focus on exhaling out through our stomach. The inhale is gonna come automatically. So it's gonna sound something like this. All right, so you can try that a few times. You can play around with it. We're gonna do it for about 30 breaths, 30 counts, All right? So inhale, elongate the spine as you exhale, side out. Inhale through the nose. And let's begin. We got five more. <sighs> All right, side out. And let's come into our Shavasana first day. Lying down, turn up the toes, arms down by our sides. So I just want to thank you for showing up for your practice today. Wherever you are, thank you so much for being here for being for yourself, knowing that every day is gonna look a little bit different, but to always to have compassion and understanding and joy for yourself. So take this time to bless yourself, bless anyone who is joining in wherever they are, whenever they are, whatever parallel universe time zone and sending blessings to Mother India for providing us with this holistic practice dedicated to our physical, mental, spiritual growth and evolution. See you next time.